Hey everybody, it's Yak here, back another video. In the latest episode of Made in Abyss, episode 9, we are finally about to get the retribution that we so desire. A room Yui was put through absolute hell, and now her embodiment of the hatred for these people that did this to her is about to wreak havoc. But before we get into that, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar content in the future. Without further ado, let us get straight into it. Before we get into it, I highly suggest that you watch my previous two videos in order to understand what exactly happened to Arumui and the history of this hollow village. So we start off this episode very similar to the last in that it's a scene between Reg and Faputa. Unlike the previous scenes, this one is a lot more tame. We don't have Faputa ripping off her arms for seemingly no reason or assaulting Reg in a very weird way to say the least, we have a, a cute scene of Rag carrying Faputa on his head. In fact, I believe this scene was to kind of build a character and make the audience understand their relationship better. There's only one integral problem, is the fact that Faputa seemingly ripping off her arm and ear, that is still visible. Her ear is bloody and Rag is carrying his dismembered arm, so it's kind of hard to get past that fact and recognize this scene as a affectionate scene. In fact, there's even one point in the scene where Faputa asks Reg to essentially give her head pats. This can't be anything normal, like a normal head pat. He has to pat directly on the place where her ear was ripped off. And what does she say? She doesn't flinch or anything. She says, do it harder. What? What? Anyway, Reg is carrying Faputa to the village in order to enact Faputa's plan, and they finally get to the village and we see Reg and the menace herself reunite. Yes, the menace of Maiden Abyss, Rico, the girl who has no fear whatsoever. Rico then approaches Reg to find out why he is carrying someone's dismembered arm, as any normal human being would ask. Reg says, sorry, but we have to get into the village because this arm is attracting beasts and bugs, which is very understandable. But before they enter the village, Rico looks back and she meets eyes with Faputa. Yes, this is the colliding of two menaces, and we see it in this scene. We have Faputa with this expression that seemingly tells you nothing. It seems like she's preoccupied with hatred for the villagers, but not really knowing what to feel for Rico. In fact, she even notices or notes that the white whistle that Rico had is a lot more refined and beautiful at this point. Now, I don't know what's going through, through Rico's head. I'm assuming she just wants to be friends with Faputa because that's usually Rico's intent with anybody. But Reg breaks their focus on each other and Rico and Reg head into the village. We then enter the village and something weird starts happening because Faputa's dismembered arm is of unfathomable value. In fact, the balance starts freaking out and a bunch of weird tentacles come out of it. And honestly, with the way things have been going in Maiden Abyss, I am surprised these tentacles did not grab um, Rico and stuff and um, start doing some very weird things with how the previous episodes have gone. In fact, I sort of expected that to happen with how the previous episodes have gone and their um, attitude towards children in this series. Let's just say that. Rico and Reg plan on taking the arm to Bailiff to try to exchange this for Nanachi, but Vuako steps in and she says, if you bring this arm of Fuputa, Bailiff is going to break down. And we have seen Bailiff break down many times and it is not a good thing. And they start talking about why Reg even has this arm to begin with. He explains that he needs to keep his promise to Fuputa about letting her in the village and then they start talking about how he would let her in the village and this is i guess something that is important to the overall story because throughout made in abyss there's been various times where Reg's incinerator is noted as something that can change the laws of the abyss cited by nanachi and this is a very weird wording because i would think they would just call it a weapon that's an incinerator or a weapon that's extremely strong but this type of wording seems to signify that Reg's incinerator is an integral part of maiden abyss's story it has something to do with the overarching truth of the actual abyss as they are discussing Reg's abyss law changing weapon 
or his incinerator, the third menace himself appears. And this guy may possibly be the greatest menace in Maiden Abyss. Because not only has he fooled the characters in Maiden Abyss with his prophecies, he's actually fooled real people, viewers of Maiden Abyss with his prophecies as well. Because there's people justifying his decisions as if he is some sort of hero. In fact, people are saying that he is a hero. I can't believe this. You're telling me a guy who had no problem killing the children of an innocent child is some sort of hero? I understand the fact he saved his crew, but why did he really save his crew? Was it because he cared so deeply about his crew? I don't think so. I think it's because of his obsession to descend the abyss and the search of this golden city. In fact, that's what his prophecies are based on. And he'll do anything in order to reach that prophecy. And this is shown directly here because Wazukan appears and he notices Vuako. And they're all having a discussion. And Rico, the menace herself, notices that Wazukan hasn't given up on his adventure. In fact, she even theorizes that he wants her to use a wish granting egg to allow them to continue on their adventure, which he's surprised by because he was not expecting to be sniffed out by another menace. And that is exactly what Rico does. She sniffs him out. And as she does this, one of the three sages, Jeromo, appears. And Jeromo's goal is to take Faputa's arm from Reg because this arm cannot be allowed in the village. As all of this kicks off, Wazukan grabs a hold of Vuiko in a very weird fashion and he takes her away to a, a safer place that is in view of the battle that is about to commence. And Vuiko asks why Jeromo has a very similar or exact name as the guy who assaulted her in the first episode, if you remember that. And Wazukan explains that Arumui made Jeromo from the feelings and memories of what Vuiko had of him in order to, I guess, somewhat give her company and also to protect the village, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you look at it from a logical aspect. But we have to consider the fact that Arumui was a child, so she didn't know everything about this. She just knew that to Vuiko, Jeromo was someone that had a profound effect on her. Reg and Jeromo sort of face off and not really a face off because fast forward a bit and Reg is captured and he has no option but to fire his law changing weapon or the incinerator and that's exactly what he does. Not only did the incinerator completely stop Jeromo in his tracks, it actually made a hole in this village which of course means that Faputa and other entities can now enter the village. And after Vrag fires his incinerator and puts Jeromo out for the count, essentially, he gives this warning to everybody about how he is going to pass out for two hours because he is a one-pump chump, and Faputa is going to come and wreak havoc on the village. Faputa then appears, and she gives this ultimatum to the villagers about how she is going to annihilate all of them and then Jeromo seemingly as a last defense tries to attack Faputa but this does the opposite because Faputa is one of Arumiwi's children as well in fact she is the coalesced hatred for these people so she actually regenerates off of Arumiwi's children I'm assuming is what happened here and she gets ready for battle and as she is readying herself to deliver this final annihilation or genocide of the villagers I find it kind of crazy how the villagers are in awe this whole time it seems like they have just climaxed, so to speak, because they're so excited to see Faputa, even though she is going to annihilate them all. And after Faputa gives her ultimatum to the villagers, she charges at them to eliminate them. And that's where the scene cuts off. We then get a scene of Nanachi waking up and explaining about how she had this dream where she was super dependent on a guy who is Wazukan in this dream and they were going along with him on a search. She mentioned how the people she was viewing in this dream resembled them but did not look like her in the physical sense. After that, she mentions how they found the treasure they were looking for and it shows a scene of Arumui and Vuoko which I'm assuming means the treasure they were looking for was their relationship from Nanachi's perspective. 
And finally, she mentioned that she just wanted to keep gazing at this dream. She then fully wakes up and Bailiff tells her that it is no longer a dream. And that is where the episode ends. I'm most interested in seeing how Faputa handles these villagers because the way she was coming at them seems like she was about to reenact something from human history. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for similar content in the future. I'm actually thinking about making individual videos on these characters and going over their character as a whole. So let me know what you would think about that and I will see you in the next video.